This video is a demonstration of the supervised classification process, um, classification of an image file. Um, in today's case, I'll be using a, a file, a data set that's in GeoTIFF format, which means it's a TIFF file, an image file, that has a geographic referencing um, system attached to it. Um, the, the data set comes from the Landsat imaging satellite, and it is the, uh, the one I will be using is um, B3, which indicates band 3 or green. So it's, uh, it's the green wavelength image from Landsat. There's seven images in total, four visible and three um, outside of the visible range. Uh, so we're going to look at, at uh, the green image. So why don't I go ahead and load the image by, and I, I put it on my desktop. Um, this is the standard format for a um, a satellite image and let me go ahead and not load pyramids um, anyway that's the image um, it's not green it's uh, in grayscale uh, the highest values just by default which are actually the most reflective in green the strongest greenness are in uh, this area and the others are less intense in green this is actually a cloud I know that because I followed the standard procedure um, the standard check of looking at the visual image, a visual image photograph taken at the same time as all the seven bands and a cloud was clearly visible in the image at that time. So it's a flaw in the data that just can't be avoided, it's just what nature does. Um, so anyway, this is the image. Um, if it makes you feel any better, um, I can make this by symbology, can put this on a green scale and uh, there's the greenness, um, there's lakes, um, Lake Ontario, uh, the Finger Lakes are down here, and the shoreline is about here. So it is a, a reasonably, um, it's a reasonable picture. I can also go ahead and load a base map, um, which will um, provide reference and reassure me that the image is, is aligned correctly and is shown correctly. And yes, um, here's the uh, the Finger Lakes, um, and I moved it by mistake. There we go. Now I will um, turn off the image, and we can see that the Finger Lakes are where they're supposed to be. Lake Ontario is where it's supposed to be. So it's a good image. What I'm going to proceed now to do is to create a training data set, a training data set that will allow me to classify um, this image into various land uses. To do that, I'm going to find excellent examples of each land use that I want to use. I'll zoom in on the Finger Lakes area um, so that I can get a, a proper scale of this. I want to find um, excellent examples of um, various land uses. Um, I think I'll zoom in on that area. So looking for excellent examples of land use um, what I'm going to do is now go ahead and draw polygons that help the computer to understand or define um, the various land uses. Um, before I do that, a couple of details. Remember, we always have to turn on the spatial analyst extension because it may turn itself off on some computers. And we also need to uh, add the image analysis toolbar, which is that one, image classification toolbar. It already knows that it's working with the single layer of imagery that I have loaded, the green Landsat layer from September 16th, I believe. Um, my first phase in this all is to go ahead and uh, begin to draw some characteristic polygons. And so I just trace and double click, click to close and I'll make another one and another one and another one. I'm avoiding touching the shore, I'm avoiding little islands or, or debris bars or anything else. So now I have several polygons. Each of these polygons um, bounds an area that I can tell from the visual imagery is a um, open water body. Um, so the next step I can go ahead and do now is to use this button 
which is the training sample manager and I can go ahead and group those all into one entity so now these are all one entity one group and I will call that group um, water so I have one land use with examples defined next I can go ahead and um, ask the compute and draw more polygons select the polygon tool and I find an area of forest and another good area of forest over there and some forest over there I'm looking for the largest areas I can get double click to close the polygon I'm looking for the largest areas I can get that are good examples and relatively uniform in the values that I'm looking for so now I have some some new ones um, new polygons and I can go ahead and glob those together and tell the computer that those are forest and and now I'm ready to draw more polygons and uh, on this area for instance which I believe is uh, developed land probably farmland so there's farmland um, and other examples of farmland um, it's it's a tough thing when uh, I'm making fairly large polygons and they're not particularly uniform but it's a tough classification problem actually so I'm going to go ahead and um, group those together and call them farm so I now have um, I now have three different land uses um, that are classified um, and I'll note that um, water is number one and forest is number two, number six and farm is number ten um, so that uh, I'll need that reference later what I could do now is take all of these polygons the group and the identifier value and class name they belong to put it all together in something called a signature file so I can create a signature file I'm gonna let that signature file go to my desktop and uh, I'm gonna give it a a name I don't think I do okay I'm okay I'm gonna let it have the name that it gives me by default I recognize it um, although it's a, a strange name go ahead and save it and now I have a signature file and I'm ready to get down to business the last button right here on this one is Sorry for the momentary lapse. Classification. What I'd like to do is um, use what's called a maximum likelihood classification. So under classification, um, under interactive supervised classification, there's several different choices I have. The one I like is maximum likelihood classification. It's simple, it's commonly used, etc. It's the most straightforward and uh, easiest to understand, even though I'm not going to explain its exact methodology. Now, I, uh, the, the layer it's the image layer that's going to be classified it's already recognized um, I need to find that signature file again and uh, there it is the one that was just created and I'm gonna let the result go to any particular file don't really care where um, and uh, because this is just a, a test and it will show me it will load and show me the file anyway so go ahead and uh, it is now um, the, the crawler is telling me that it's doing that computation it's using the uh, information and it now gives me back a relatively good classification um, the brownish is water the Finger Lakes showed up this part of this Finger Lake didn't show up didn't show up too good and it shows me forested areas and it shows me agricultural areas in blue and forested areas in green so in this case it did a fairly good job um, could be better Samples, the uh, training samples could be picked better. Um, all kinds of other um, things could be done better. But for the moment, that's uh, we're going to consider that a success.